Bingo, back to meat space again. Then he battled the rock, the the, mo the most electrifying man in psychiatric entertainment. <laughs> uh... Nick and I are kind of marks, in case you haven't guessed. <laughs> I'm sure nobody who's watched this vid or video series could ever possibly guess that. And... <clears throat> Actually, I feel like just the other day, somebody had to explain something to me in terms of wrestling for me to understand it. Was that when I, I was mean, explained? Was... was that when we were talking, you asked me what a wench was in Let's Play Dishonored, and I explained that it was like the women who surround Triple H when he's on his Viking throne? No. Okay. Because there, there it was, was actually that. something fairly complicated. I can't oh, okay. remember what. <laughs> oh, right. no. I explained something to somebody else in, in wrestling terms. Um, did it make? Did they understand it? Yes. Okay, that's good. Well, because I use the term jobber. Okay. And they're like, what yeah, the hell's sure. a jobber? Okay, let's see. Okay. Reality is, at the end of day, contextual. And as the meat world comes back into focus, your head once again... No, oh, damn it! <laughs> You've delayed me, Nick. <laughs> you fatally delayed me. I apologize. Okay. Oh, it looks like enough time has passed that people are up again. Oh, nice. And, and Johnny Five has been waiting for us faithfully. Check David Fry here. David looks almost as tired as you do. You can tell that this case has gotten under his skin like it has yours. Any luck in there? <clears throat> we found an exact match for the DNA. But it was linked to a dead chop shop assistant by the name of Silas Forsberg. Now, I have my theories, but what do you think is going on here, Flandry? Silas must have an identical twin brother. Maybe Silas faked his death, or the DNA evidence doesn't belong to the killer. Faked his death? Yep. Maybe Silas faked his death. It's a distinct possibility. What was it we saw in the autopsy report? <clears throat> Simple suicide. He killed himself with a drug overdose. He was killed by sedatives, but the coroner still thought he had ripped his own face off, or the face was so mangled that they had to use dental records to identify him. Good yeah, catch. That, last one. that matches up yeah. something I've seen runners try. It's easy enough to find a body shop that'll make a replica set of teeth for you. Find some schlub off the streets no one will miss, swap the teeth, and throw the heat off your trail for a while. Lucky I've never been that desperate. <clears throat> why would we need to go to why would he need to go to those lengths? Do the police records have something linking him to a different crime? Because he had a corp gunning for him, maybe. He had a prior for unlicensed plastic surgery. Probably got in over his head on loans. Chop shop assistant doesn't pay well. Linking him to a different crime. Well he, he did have that prior for unlicensed plastic surgery. That kind of yeah. Let's try that. True. Wouldn't look too good on someone's record if they wanted to become a doctor. It probably wouldn't! No! <laughs> yes! I, okay, yeah, I did... I did slice that guy's face off and try to graft it to my dog. But, in my defense... It was practice. Tr <laughs> True. Wouldn't look too good on someone's record if they wanted to become a doctor. I think this is beginning to come together. The late Silas left all his belongings to a doctor. Dr. Holmes. Employment records have him as the administrator at Merc Mercy Mental. The picture on his file matches the person you saw downtown. It's the, per the person this DNA belongs to. All evidence points to him being your killer, whoever he really is. All right. Should go fi find this Dr. Holmes and ask him some very pointed questions. Please pay him my respect. Ooh, 4,000 million! I always find that high caliber rounds get the message across. You should clearly hire some friends and go loaded for bear. I side-loaded a ton of val valuable data from those Lone Star Matrix nodes. Here's your cut. Oh, okay, that's what the money's for. You're not coming? Nice. I think my part here is done. You might want to go sticking your hand into a hornet's nest, but I'm a little more wary of the jobs I take these days. Well, can't blame him for that. He's already helped us quite a bit. There's a cockroach in my eggs! That's the protein boost! No. Oh. Someone else says I'll have the pancakes. 
Why would you make an order immediately after? No. <laughs> Let's talk to TB Gruger, Gruberman. All right. Despite the hour, Buster is fastidiously put together <clears throat> in another wrinkle-free suit. He shows every indication that he's been up for hours, sunk to his elbows in a dozen crates, each containing objects of sinister matte black, hidden beneath curls of straw-colored packing foam. The foam flies about as he inventories the shipment, clinging to every surface except for Buster's immaculate suit. <coughs> Just in time. I've got a whole slew of new toys in from a supplier back east. Factory fresh and still smelling of their mother's gun oil. Maybe there's something in this batch that you'd be interested in. How long have you been in the trade, Buster? Well, let's see. I left Cal Free on July 8th, 2038, at 6.13 in the morning. It was a Thursday. From there, I wandered a bit. P applied my skills as a merc in a half dozen different wars, official or otherwise. Never did take the running the shadows like some of the boys I knew. Too subtle for my tastes, I suppose. Surely there was no, f sur surely there was no shortage of full-scale engagements to be had, so I didn't want for work. Might still be doing it today if I hadn't lost the arm. How did you lose it? It was also stupid. Some Azzies were lobbing smokers behind our lines. More to mess with us than anything. <clears throat> I decided to toss one back. And it didn't just figure out that the one I grabbed ain't a smoker. <laughs> I got it off, but only just barely. Shredded my old arm, but good. Got plenty of other scars to remember the moment by as well. But the arm was the big one. So take a word of advice from an old soldier. Make sure you're never holding a grenade in one hand unless you just pulled the pin with the other. Now, if I haven't given you reason to doubt my professional competence, how about we talk turkey? What can I get you? Let's see what we got. Alright. So, perhaps we can just which adjust the weapons. Okay. You, let's see what we currently have. The AK-97, 10 damage, long range, 24 capacity. Let's see if we can do better than that. Ooh, if I had Close Combat 3, I could get a katana. <laughs> Katanas are always better. Okay, yeah, they have... Oh, they have a, they have a, he has a bunch of, he has several new assault rifles. <coughs> oh, nice. <coughs> Let's see. The Simapal, the Heckler and Koch G12A3Z. Smaller than most assault rifles, yet just as deadly. One subtle thing I like about the Shadowrun universe is that a lot of, they use, a, a, some of the future corporations are actual, like, real corporations. Mm-hmm. Which I, which is just a nice, it's like a nice touch that some of them are still around. Like, I believe I mentioned that, uh, what is it? Like, something Krupp. Well, I remember, like, Seder Krupp is the world's biggest mega corporation, and Krupp Corporation is a, an actual huge company. Right. And they actually kind of, and historically they actually kind of were an evil mega corporation. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, so Heckler and Koch... Of damage twelve, capacity thirty-two. Or the I was FN. Say that's a real. FN. Yeah, exactly. That's FN HAR, damage twelve, capacity thirty-six. A specialist assault rifle used by corpsec units, slightly more accurate than its competitors. Seems promising. All right, so got that. Let's see, is there anything else? Okay. Oh, drones! We can equip Type B's now, remember? Oh, right, yeah. Ooh, type B Strato 9. An old Lone Star hover drone that has been given a weapons upgrade. Ooh. Come to Papa. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so yeah, this is a nice... This is actually a 50% increase in ammo capacity, a 20% increase in damage, and, I, and it said that it's slightly more accurate. No reason not to. 
Rooms. All right. All right. All right, Johnny Five, you can take it easy for a while. <laughs> we're we're, call we're just. It's a good. That's a good question. I need a new name for this one, don't I? Oh look! Check it out. It's there. There it is. Oh, nice. It's in a conversation with that dwarf, I guess. Wait, no, here it is. <laughs> it's business. Need some new armor. Let's see. What do I? That looks like have? powered armor. There. Yeah, ninja suit. Oh yeah, I, I know. Oh, that's right, the ninja suit. I need to check its stats. I can't really... Okay. All right. Ganger mask. Taken off a dead, which seemed like, taken off a dead ganger, which seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> I love that phrase. Seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> okay, secure ninja clothing. All right, here. Oh wow, yeah. There's we can boost armor quite a bit here, actually. And that grants me a dodge plus one stealth suit. Ooh, which gives both a dodge plus one and movement plus one. Kunai ninja suit. Throwing weapons plus one, movement plus one. Mill spec flight suit. Oh, drone control plus one. And intelligent. Matrix courier. Golden boy. Which is actually also. Intelligence plus one, combat, drone combat plus one. It seems to me this, maybe it's just cosmetically different. Okay. Um, First Nation armor. Alley Punk. Alley Mage. Reefer United Canadian American States shock gear. <laughs> armor, six armor. Let's see. Ganger mask. I don't want to wear a rabbit mask. Let's see. This boosts strength, which I don't have much use for. Ah, let's see here. Although Ganger Mask, it does give me not only the armor, but plus one quickness and plus five. Well, sometimes fashion has to suffer for the sake of our, our work, Nick, I guess. <laughs> yes. Much as I enjoyed being Flandry the Ninja. Flandry the... It's not as bad as I feared. Well, n now I'm now I'm the guy from Hotline Miami. <laughs> That's so bad. All right. Okay, let's talk to our Elven friend, Algernon. Alger Algernon looks the same as always. So much so that one may wonder if he ever takes time to eat or sleep. Perhaps his presence on this plane of existence is insubstantial enough that he isn't subject to such base needs. Or perhaps he just does those things when no one is looking. <laughs> dark, dark clouds surround you, my friend. But perhaps there's something I could provide that would help with whatever weighs so heavily upon you. What's new in the world of magic, Algernon? The spirits are stirring. Something has upset the natural order. There's something new. Different. I've seen some sick direct lately. Might be what you mean. Algernon takes a hard... <coughs> takes a hard look at you for what may be the first time. But this is the hard look of a magician, whose eyes pierce the veil of reality and burrow through a man's soul. <coughs> I can see you have met with disturbing visions. But there is something else out there. Something not born of life, as other spirits are. Oh. Shaking his head, Algernon opens his class hands to you, as if begging forgiveness. Too often this world leaves us confounded. 
I pray I have not left you in such a state with my idle musings. Please, can I be of service to you today? Well, there's really not much we can buy, but... Sadly. Nah. Not enough money. But there are, like... Well, I don't really have the magic skills, because I... Like, haste, but, you know, like, new hate. Yeah. Like, see, so haste three it increases AP by one for th four rounds, whereas haste one only does it by for two rounds. That's the kind of difference between the magic levels. Okay. Uh, there's Mr. Delilah. 